Hello everyone, this is Srikant and welcome to Yovaltrix. Today we are going to deal with Power Systems Part 13. In the previous class we have been studying with Power Systems Part 12. So types of line supports, we have covered types of line supports, are some important I3 rules and conductor spacing and spacing between conductors to be allotted with their respective voltages, right? And clearance between uh, conductor and ground. So today we are going to deal with some important topics. So short circuit calculations. So first of all, short circuit calculations are nothing but we are here discussing about faults, and uh, in fact we are analyzing those faults. So different types of walls and different types of parameters used to protect these power systems. Uh, so, so uh, as far as in previous class I had mentioned, what is a power system? It is nothing but an alternator. I mean generation. The transformer and with some OHT lines. OHT is nothing but overhead transmission lines and transmission and application let us consider it as a motor and this transmission OH does nothing but transmission lines transmission lines and this this as the transformer and this as another transformer so uh, whenever a fault occurs whenever a fault occurs nearby a motor so it will affect transformer it will affect transformer it will affect transmission lines and it, it will also affect alternator so uh, so what is the important bit right over here is alternator is less prone to falls less prone to falls whereas overhead transmission lines are more prone to faults so these are the two points about this and next we are going for different types of faults types of faults uh, we, we must be aware of symmetrical and asymmetrical faults for symmetrical faults all the phase currents all the phase fault currents will be same R, Y, P. For symmetrical, I R is equal to I Y is equal to I B. If it is a symmetrical fault. If it is unsymmetrical, I R is not equal to I Y is not equal to I B. So this is the only basic difference between symmetrical and unsymmetrical faults. So for for uh, for different types of faults. So LG fault, uh, LLG fault, and triple L fault, and triple LLG fault. LG fault and LLG fault comes under unsymmetrical faults, whereas triple L and triple LG faults comes under symmetrical faults. Okay, symmetrical faults. So, uh, what are the maximum chances of occurring of uh, LG fault? Is 65 percent. 65 percent of total faults are LG false whereas LLG false it is 20% whereas triple L false it is 10% 10% whereas triple LG false it is 5% so please make a screenshot or note it down this is also a very important object to bits so so far I have discussed about different types of false and their uh, ch chances of falls chances of falls so but uh, 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 magnitude of fault current is different from occurrence of falls right so what I wanted to convey is magnitude of fault current is highest for is highest for LG fault LG fault. See, uh, for, let us consider IR, fault current as IF. IF is equal to IA. 
so for for lg lg fault whereas for uh, llg fault it is if is equal to ia by 3 where ia is the phase current of phase a uh, or r or r okay uh, phase current by 3 times it is a symmet symmetrical fault so the fault current is highest for lg fault and uh, fault current for uh, symmetrical fault is ia by 3 but which is dangerous dangerous fault that is if it causes a fault it will entirely destruct the entire power system and that is triple l g fault or triple l fault or say symmetrical fault so so far i think i'm i'm clear with it so you you guys you two also uh, come a uh, come to a point so uh, so slightly make the difference between uh, magnitude of fault current and which is dangerous fault uh, which the fault current which has which has largest magnitude is lg fault and the dangerous fault is symmetrical fault that is llg or lll fault right so uh, i'm going to uh, give you a formula about short circuited current short circuited current is nothing but the current that flows through the phase when fault occurs fault occurs so the, this has a formula isc is equal to i by percentage z but but when our fault occurs percentage x is much higher but percentage r is much lower so we neglect it as uh, and read on uh, renote the formula as i is i s is equal to i by percentage x i is actually full load current full load current where percentage x is fault current so far i think i am clear so i s c is equal to i by percentage x in examinations he will mention the percentage reactance and you have to calculate the short circuit current or full load current in the same way he may ask you power short circuited power so uh, full load power by percentage x so so now we are going to calculate per unit impedances per unit impedances see here we are going to provide a simple basic formula and we can apply to any other existing uh, existing uh, existing terms which you can just substitute and then find the uh, value which we require so that is nothing but jpu new is equal to jpu old into m b a b new by m b a b old into k b b uh, old or square by k v b new whole square so uh, please note this note down this formula jp is nothing but impedance per unit new impedance per unit when base values have been changed uh, the, uh, sometimes it is necessary to define the power system in a single base value so that, that's that's completely a theory part but i think i expect you guys uh, just have an idea about the per unit values and base values so if not if you, you just go for a little five minutes demo about uh, or just go through our previous power system analysis test books just to have a brief a little bit idea a little bit idea for technical examinations is quite enough to have this formula so jpu new is is equal to jpu old into mvab new by mvab new uh, new base value mva old base value mva old kvb whole square by new kvb whole square so these are nothing but base values okay so so this is all about uh, short circuit uh, faults and uh, this thing you have to go for dummies please find dumps in online and just and just do practice practice is must here right okay so next uh, here I would like to add one more point here so concept of voltage stability so whenever a fault occurs there will be huge changes in voltage it can't be stable right 
so whenever a fault occurs at if fault occurs at no load to have stability we employ a shunt reactor right shunt reactor for full load we employ a shunt capacitor okay so to have voltage stability we employ these two okay so please make a screenshot of this and and uh, next we are going for the next immediate topic of production whenever a fault occurs we have to remove the circuit so we can't directly remove this circuit but we have we have employ some more devices to uh, limit the fault current in fact so first of all we employ reactors water reactors reactors are nothing but used to uh, limit fault current so these are used to limit fault current these are actually connected in series in reactors connected in series to power system okay so these are usually of large reactants but small resistance so whenever we employ a reactor uh, the, the required circuit breaker uh, we require a circuit breaker of lower size so this is because a reactor actually limits the fault current so the size of the circuit breaker can be reduced so we employ a reactor here and and next we are going for isolator what is an isolator uh, isolator is one which isolates the circuit under under no load conditions see isolator only operates under no load conditions it can't work under load conditions where a circuit breaker can be employed for load conditions so where does this isolator is employed it is always employed in between in between a circuit breaker here we have a circuit breaker and here we have an isolator and we have here a another isolator so this is the actual circuit so a isolator is always placed on both sides of the circuit breaker here if, if this is one side this is the second side we can find the both sides of a circuit breaker so an isolator is not not designed on basis of full load current because it it, it actually operates on no load so uh, so it is uh, naturally it is gifted with no load current is enough to uh, it actually operates with no load current but it, it do not uh, it, it is not based on the basis of full load current it is not designed on the basis of full load current so so one more point i would like to hear is its operating time operating time of operating time of isolator isolator is 0 0.002 seconds 0 0.002 seconds so so far this is all about uh, power systems part 13 and now we are going for another important topic circuit breakers circuit breakers uh, usually operate at transient state of transient state of short circuit current see what is transient state is nothing but whenever the fault whenever the full load current is disturbed it will when a disturbance occurs it will it will it will rise up to some point and it is not at all stable so this is nothing but transient states there will be transient subtransient states when considered about reactants so uh, usually a circuit breaker operates at 
transient state so circuit breakers operate at with cycles cycles it depends on the cycles so for different ratings we have cycles too so these should be inspected once in six months okay question these the the points i'm going to mention here are a very important questions that questions have been asked from very uh, recent examinations and from last examinations for all ias genco transco ssc je rrb je and npdcl students who are preparing for to crack technical examinations so what does a circuit breaker do a circuit breaker actually breaks the circuit breaks the circuit it is a circuit breaker whereas uh, whereas a relay uh, detects the detects the fault so a, a circuit breaker breaks the fault a relay detects the fault so please do make it as a, it as a point so now we are going for different types of circuit breakers uh, first of all we are going for air blast air blast circuit breaker air blast circuit breaker is usually used for uh, voltage or level of 400 kilo volts and its oper operating time operating time is up to 50 uh, millisec right so these are used for a railway electrification so where do we find uh, air blast circuit breakers a railway electrification these actually have huge noise huge noise okay so next so next we are going for a vacuum circuit breaker a vacuum circuit breaker is uh, nothing but which uh, works on works on capacitance switching capacitance switching this is very important question uh, capacitance switching vacuum circuit breaker operates on capacitance switching and uh, it is employed where uh, where voltages are high where voltages are are high and currents are low currents are low so next uh, vacuum circuit breaker is employed for rural electrification rural electrification so these are the very important topics uh, where i have been specially uh, uh, made some detailed uh, points where questions have been asked repeatedly so from vacuum circuit breaker these are the points you please do don't just consider these as three points from these three bits we, we have covered more than nine questions so th this is all the way tricks electrics is its aim is if you just uh, are much aware of these three points you, you may crack up to nine bits so, okay so next we are going for oil circuit breakers so one gram of oil i mean one centimeter cube of oil covers uh, 100 centimeter cube of gas so that is nothing but when arc occurs a one centimeter cube of oil disperses a gas of 100 centimeter cube so that it occupies the area of 100 centimeter cube so i hope you are, you are clear with this and and for arc interruption arc interruption if you consider a oil circuit breaker it employs only 10 percent of the total oil so and the remaining 90 percent of oil is used for, only 10 percent is used for arc interruption whereas 90 percent of oil used for cooling purposes so this 10 percent of oil is used for mocb types and 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 it is a completely separate topic mocb manager oil circuit breakers oil circuit breakers are used up to 36 kilowatts 36 kilowatts whereas vacuum circuit breakers are used up to 66 kilowatts okay okay so next we are going for 
sulfur hexafluoride circuit breakers sf6 so these are used up to 132 kv 132 kv so these are efficient and free from noise noise free so these are actually sf6 is uh, not uh, not flammable not flammable not flammable and it is non toxic so it, it it actually has high electronegativity electronegativity is nothing but which has the capability of absorbing electrons absorbs electrons absorbs electrons so in circuit breakers circuit breakers are are designed and the on the basis of current carrying current symmetrical current carrying capacity this is nothing but braking capacity see we have a formula for braking capacity that is nothing but root 3 into vl into where vl is line voltage uh, into symmetrical braking current whereas for making capacity it is 2.55 times into braking capacity so we must be aware of braking capacity and making capacity braking capacity is nothing but symmetrical braking current so which is used for to break a circuit whereas to make the circuit for example if we wanted to clo close this circuit and that is nothing but making circuit we, we should have 2.55 then braking capacity for example if the total braking capacity current is 100 amps so it can break the current uh, just below 100 amps so to make the current so to uh, so so to make the circuit we should have greater than 255 amps it is designed it is designed to be like that so so it is designed to be like that and this is all about circuit breakers and uh, please make a screenshot of the required necessary matter and power systems uh, part 14 is waiting for you guys uh, please do share with your friends thank you